Now let's say I have a part that I believe is intolerance and I take it to QC to be inspected. QC needs to be temperature controlled and every piece of measuring equipment needs to be calibrated at the same temperature that it's being used to inspect at. A shop I used to work at had heat but no air conditioning and the guys in production were trying to hold plus two ten thousandths of an inch minus nothing on a one inch bore diameter in aluminum. They made the parts in an 80 degree shop on a summer day and then they brought them into a 68 degree QC room. They sat for a little while and then once they were inspected, the size of the bore had shrunk to the point where it was too small and out of tolerance. Now luckily this was thermal contraction and we were able to hone the bores up to size and save the parts. But not every story like this has a happy ending. And if you're making tight tolerance parts or large parts of any kind, you need to make sure you recognize the effects changing temperatures can have on the outcome. In most cases, it's a small change and it's likely not something you have to worry about every day. But if you're in this trade long enough, there will come a day and it will be the difference between making good parts and scrap. In this line of work, it is our job to account for every single detail and consider every possible outcome when we're laying out a plan to successfully make a part. But there's one thing that occurs all around us that often goes unnoticed. It happens to your spindle, your ball screws, your measuring instruments, and most importantly, your part. In most cases, it's so small you can't see it or hear it and you won't even know it's there until it's too late. So what happens to a piece of metal if the temperature increases? The atoms that make up that piece of metal start to expand and get further away from each other. Each atom will get further apart by the exact same amount, which means the change in size is proportional and can be easily calculated. If you have a 200 inch long part, it's gonna consist of a lot more atoms than a 20 inch long part, which means it's gonna grow much more when exposed to the same change in temperature. So for a 20 inch long part, the change might be insignificant, but when you try to hold true positioning on whole locations down the entire length of a 200 inch long part, thermal expansion could become a factor. Even the slightest change can make the hole at the far end of the part out of position. So how do you compensate for it? Well, different material types expand at different rates. Materials like diamond, silicon carbide, tungsten, and invar have low thermal expansion rates, while materials like aluminum, beryllium, and Teflon have high thermal expansion rates. You can calculate how much dimension is going to change by taking the coefficient of thermal expansion for the material type that you're using, multiplying it by the amount that the temperature has increased, and then multiplying that by a given distance. Pretty cool, right? But it's not just the temperature in your shop that you have to worry about. The most critical components on your machine are made out of metal, and they're subject to thermal expansion as well. If you run a machine driven by ball screws, each axis has a ball screw with a motor and an encoder attached to it. As the motor spins, the encoder is tracking the position of your table. If your machine is traveling at high feed rates for long periods of time, it's going to generate heat and expand the length of your ball screw. If that happens, your encoder won't know it and the position of your table can be different than when you started. High spindle speeds over relatively long periods of time also create heat within your machine's spindle. That heat can cause your spindle to grow and your Z position of your tool to change slightly. Now modern machines combat these problems by using spindle chillers and dynamic thermal compensation to account for the variance, which is a big part of the reason today's machines are far more accurate and the spindles last way longer than they used to. Because they're designed to be pushed and to run at high rates of speed for long periods of time while maintaining their accuracy. I hope you guys gained something from watching this video and I hope you don't ever have to learn any of these lessons the hard way. If you haven't set up a CNC Expert profile yet, go sign up now and share your parts with the world. Make sure you're taking advantage of everything that platform has to offer. Before you go, leave a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys next time.